This is perhaps the most flawed five-star book that I've ever read in my life, and I really want to talk about it. This book by Franz Bardone is called Initiation into Hermetics. It is the first book in his series, which really aims to bring an initiate to the level of an adept. It is a full course in magic. And this book, Initiation into Hermetics, is really considered an occult classic by a lot of different people. So in my book club, we just spent the last seven weeks dissecting this book. And then we're also, there's a group of us that are also gonna go back through and do a lot of the exercises together. So I have a lot of thoughts about this book. If you are one of my channel members, watching this video, skip this video because it's going to be a repeat of literally everything we've already been talking about on our Zoom calls. So nothing new for you to see here, but for everyone else, I really want to talk about this book. So this book, Initiation into Hermetics, is divided into two parts. The first part is theory, and then the second part is practice. What I really liked about this book in particular is that it differs from a lot of modern witchcraft books that you read today. It focuses more on theurgy versus thaumaturgy, so it really focuses more on this spiritual and enlightenment or this union with the divine, it emphasizes spiritual growth over material gain. So it's not necessarily a book of spells. You're not going to be able to open this and be able to do a spell to get a job or to find a lover. It's not geared towards thaumaturgy where the focus is a little bit more on using your magical powers for practical gains to influence your material world in a pragmatic way. That's not to say that some of the information in this book can't be used practically, but really the focus is on spiritual growth. And I truly think that if a beginner occultist were to read this book and actually do all the exercises in this book, I do believe it would bring them to the state of being an adept. This is, as it claims, a full system of magic, a full course of magic. However, it is also very, very flawed and very out of date. Usually with books like this where I have so many critiques, I would not consider it five stars. I would give it maybe a four star or a three star rating or something like that. But despite the flaws it has and despite how outdated it can be with some of its contents, particularly when it comes to energy mapping and things like that, somehow somehow this book still managed to be five stars for me. I want to start by talking about the title because the title of this book is Initiation into Hermetics and I think going into this book people might be misled a bit with that title. The title insinuates that it's going to initiate you into a classic hermetic practice and that is not necessarily true. We've had many conversations in my book club about what true hermeticism actually is and what texts could potentially be considered as true hermeticism for versus a more new age or modified version of Hermeticism. So for anybody interested in true Hermeticism, go back and read the Corpus Hermeticum. That's probably one of the only texts that everyone can agree on that is true Hermeticism. Even the Kabbalion is controversial because a lot of people consider that more new age and not necessarily true Hermeticism. This book is an introduction to Franz Bardon's system of magic. So he has his own view on the elements. He has his own view on energy and how it should be manipulated. He has his own perspective on the realm of the body, the realm of the mind, and then the realm of the astral. So if you're looking for a book that's supposedly going to guide you through a true hermetic practice, this is probably not the one you want to pick up because this is very much his own modified version. And his system of magic really kind of assumes that you're not practicing any other system of magic, because if you do, it may conflict with some of the principles that he discusses in this book. Franz Bardon's system of magic really utilizes the four elements, but he presents them differently than most other systems, and he applies different correspondences. For example, his correspondences are very different than, say, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and as you progress throughout the book and start working through more complicated spiritual tasks, you are encouraged to work with them through the lens of these four elements, plus Akasha. His System of Magic also discusses his view of the universe encompassing the physical, mental, and the astral. One of the biggest complaints that readers seem to have with this book is that the author really pushes asceticism and rigorous discipline, and that is not going to be for everyone. He claims that you cannot progress to adept without rigorous discipline and asceticism. You cannot move from that beginner stage without a certain level of dedication to all of the exercises and steps that he outlines in this book. And so a lot of people don't A, have time for that, B, patience for that, or C, maybe their goal is not theurgy, in which case this is not the book for them, and they want something that's a little bit more practical. But I get it. I see why. I am very much pro 
discipline and asceticism. Just me personally, I don't care what anybody else does in their own spiritual practice, but spiritual growth or spiritual transformation, when you want to go through this metamorphosis, I do think that there is this level of honesty that you have to have with yourself about how disciplined you actually need to be to get to where you want to go. I think a lot of people want a quick fix. They want results right now. They may pick up a book like this and read his grandiose claims of levitation and a bunch of other insane things that he claims the magician can do and immediately be put off by this content because it seems insane, right? But if you're not disciplined enough to do the practices as he says and to work through this spiritual metamorphosis, then we cannot claim that anything he says in this book isn't true because we haven't even gotten there ourselves. So I do actually prefer a little bit more discipline when it comes to my spiritual practice. And that perhaps comes from my history as a Zen Buddhist and all that, as you all know, I was very, very disciplined in that practice probably for the first time in my entire life. Beforehand, I had much more of an intuitive process when it came to my spiritual growth, and I kind of just let things flow and come to me as they needed to come to me. I never really pushed myself. It wasn't until my Zen Buddhist practice that I applied rigorous discipline, and I noticed a huge shift in my spiritual growth when I actually did that. So personally for me, experiencing both sides of the coin, whether having a free-flowing, intuitive approach to spirituality or having a more disciplined approach to it, I did see a lot more profound results when I was more disciplined. So. I know that the biggest complaint with this book is the the part on asceticism and how how strict he is, but I actually really enjoyed that part of it. Some other flaws in this book obviously are the fact that it was written in 1956, so prepare yourself for some light racism and sexism as it's a product of its time. Unfortunately, anytime you're reading books that are old like this, it's gonna unfortunately have that kind of tone to it. He also presents a lot of personal gnosis and states it as fact, which you all know by now is a personal pet peeve of mine. If you're going to share personal gnosis, that's great, but don't present it like it is fact. But of course, again, it was written in 1956. There wasn't as much of an emphasis on citing your sources properly, and there wasn't a whole conversation about how to present personal gnosis in the spiritual communities. This was a mind-blowing book for 1956. It was revolutionary, and so I kind of have to put aside my criticisms because if a book like this were written today, I would be way harder on it because we just have, we have a different way of viewing how things should be presented to the community. And I also think we're a lot harder on authors nowadays, especially with AI books and plagiarism and all of that, way harder on authors than we were back then. Keep in mind when reading this book, a lot of grandiose claims are made, as I mentioned previously. So he claims that the magician can levitate and he shows you how to get there. He shows you how to achieve the process of actually levitating. Again, some people may immediately write that off and call this guy insane, but I'm a very open-minded person. I don't necessarily believe in levitation, but I don't necessarily not believe in it either. So I'm open to the spiritual growth. Because this book is so rigorous and it is a full, complete system of magic, I do recommend if you pick this up and read it, to just read it once through. Read the entire book all the way to completion to get an idea of what this system is like before you start doing all of the practices. I know that the author preaches you must do this exercise before you move on to this exercise, and I agree. Once you start the exercises, yes, it is imperative that you go in order and build slowly, but just to even decide if this system of magic is for you, I think it's important to just read through the entire book first, see how it resonates, then go back and do a deep read where you slowly work through. I mean, this book should take months, if not years, to really work through all the exercises. Not even not even to mention his other books in the series where he talks about evocation and other things. I think this is a book that every occultist needs to read, for better or worse. Whether you agree with him or disagree with him, whether you can get through the book or not, because it is very, very intense. <laughs> it was, honestly, I don't know if I could have gotten through the book without reading it in book club with other people, but if you can form a study group and read this book, I truly think it will advance your craft. There are just some golden nuggets in here, and despite its flaws, it's kind of a magnificent piece of work. I'm not gonna lie. It is pretty interesting, and it definitely sparks a lot of debate and a lot of conversations. Hope you enjoyed this quickly 
little book review. If you've read this book, leave your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear, did you love this book? Did you hate it? Did you find it transformative for you? What were your thoughts? What were your opinions? Because man, we have had such good conversations about it and so much so that this is actually the first video that I've made about one of our book club books. Usually I don't make videos about them. We just read them and, and discuss them as a group and I never make a video for the public. So this is the first time that I'm actually doing that. But let me know your thoughts down below and I'll see you in another video soon.